Hi everyone, welcome to this new video and in this video we are going to talk about admission webhook in Kubernetes and we will be understanding what these admission webhooks are and the types of admission webhook and how we can actually build these admission webhooks. So a Kubernetes admission webhook is a mechanism that allows you to intercept the request. We can validate those requests as well and potentially we can modify those requests as well before actually persisting them into the etcd server. It acts as a gatekeeper ensuring that only authorized and compliant requests are accepted into the cluster and thus preventing any potential security breach or misconfiguration. Now let's understand how these Kubernetes admission webhook work. When a Kubernetes API request is made, the admission webhook intercepts the request before it is reached to the API server. The webhook then performs some validation and check based on the request content and configure the admission webhook policies. If the request passes all those checks, it is allowed and recorded into the cluster. However, if the request fail any of these checks, the webhook rejects those requests with the error message and thus being processed into the cluster. So now let's understand different type of admission webhooks. So we have two kinds of admission webhook. One is the mutating webhook and second one is the validation webhook. Now the mutating webhook can modify the request object before it is persisted onto the Kubernetes cluster. And this allows us to enforce specific configuration or apply any transformation onto the request. The other kind of a webhook that we have is the validating webhook and validating webhook can only check or validate the request and they can simply either approve or reject the request based on the policies that you have defined. So now we have a basic idea of what admission webhooks are, how they work and what are the different type of admission webhooks available. And now let's see the implementation of mutating webhook like how we can implement a mutating webhook. And for this demo session, we are going to build a mutating webhook in Golang and this mutating webhook is going to modify the pod creation request. So whenever a pod is going to get created, we'll simply apply the request and the limit parameters into that pod object and our pod will get created with those specified requests and limits. So here I'm in my Kubernetes development repository and we have a folder called mutating webhook folder and this folder contains the implementation for writing up a mutating webhook and uh, we will be going to write the mutating webhook in the golang so i have already written the webhook and i'll be explaining you know how we can write the webhook so first we have uh, initialized the empty go project and then i have created a main dot main dot go file and if we go to this main dot go file here we can see that uh, this is our entry point and mutating webhook requires us a uh, a webhook server so here you can see that i am using uh, a web, i'm starting my webhook server on port 8080 and then it is a tls based webhook server so which means that i have to pass the tls certificate and the tls key and this is going to establish the communication on the tls channel itself now if you see here this is a gin based server so you can use any http framework in golang to build the webhook so here i'm using gin and i have defined two endpoints one is the health endpoint this is there just to ensure whether my webhook is running or not and the second endpoint is the important endpoint which is a mutate endpoint and this is going to accept the request whenever we create a pod and then it's going to mutate the pod object request and it's simply going to you know put those request parameters and the limit parameters in the request and then the object and then the pod will get created with those specified request so i'll just simply show you the health endpoint uh, implementation so if we just uh, go here this is our uh, health endpoint that is implemented and i'm just simply returning the message as uh, message and then the pong so this is just a endpoint that is uh, there to test whether the webhook server is running or not now let's see the other function which is the mutate function and this function is implemented here handle mutate and if we go to this particular function first i'm just creating a request a uh, empty object of admission review then i'm simply uh, you know filling up the values whatever values was passed to this endpoint and uh, this is going to get filled uh, all the values will get populated in this particular object so now this particular object will have all the values and uh, remember that this is the post endpoint that's why kubernetes api server is going to call this mutate endpoint and it is going to pass all the payload related to the request and uh, we are just going simply you know storing that request json request into this particular object now from that particular object we are just taking up the request part so this request part will contains the payload like what's the actual incoming payload then simply uh, i am converting this uh, I'll, I'll just simply just unmarshal this request into the pod object 
so here i am doing the same thing i am unmasking the request and uh, just converting into the pod object now we'll create a empty response object and this is also coming from admission uh, response then uh, what we want to do is we want to simply patch the request because what we are doing here is that whatever request we are getting from the api server to this webhook we just simply want to patch the request and add the request and the limit parameters in that request so here you can see that the patch type is set as json type patch and uh, here you can see that i am setting the response id uh, 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 response uid coming from the you know request itself and then i have written a function here which is add request uh, add resource limit and this particular function is going to you know apply those limit and request parameter into the object itself so let's see how uh, it is implemented so if we go to this particular function here i have defined a patch and this patch is of type map uh, map type with values as string and interface now if you see here i am just iterating up all all the containers that are passed to this particular function so this so we are passing the pod object and inside that pod object there can be multiple containers so we are iterating on all the containers and we are checking if the limits are set as null so if the limits are set as null what we are doing is we are simply you know creating a patch uh, object and here you can see that the type uh, is string and the interface so we are defining the operation as add because we are going to add few fields here then where we want to add is defined here so we want to add inside spec then we have a location called container then we are giving the you know id or the uh, you know container index then we are giving the resources section so this will be the path and then what value we want to append is given here so in the request we want to set the value as 150 milli cpus and the memory as 128 megabytes where on the limits we want to set the cpu as 300 milli cpus and the memory as 256 uh, megabytes and then what we are doing we are simply you know returning up that patch to the uh, to the caller function so now if we go back to the function so here we got the patch and we are setting this value to the response dot patch uh, we are just checking whether the error is equal to nil or not and then if the if there is any error then we are simply you know uh, just saying that response dot allowed is equal to false which means that this request will not be allowed and then we are setting up the message here as well that what message we want to return back now if there is no error which means that the you know patching was done successfully and now we are simply setting the re response dot allowed equal to true and then we are setting up this response now uh, what we have to do here is that now we have to set the uh, response to the admission review uh, dot response object and we are setting it here and then we are sending this response back to the caller uh, of this method so this method is uh, or this particular endpoint is called by the api server itself so the modified values or the modified patch will be sent to send back to the api server and then api server will create the pod with these new values so whatever values uh, we have specified here these value will get applied to that pod pod okay so now uh, this is the implementation of the webhook and uh, we all we can also see the docker file as well here so i am just creating up a docker file and this is just going to build the image uh, build the binary first and then we are creating up the docker image now if you see here in the main dot go we are just setting up some you know certificates here uh we need to provide the tls certificate and the tls key so we'll see how we can generate them and in order to generate them we can simply follow the readme instructions so now let's create the tls certificate for our webhook and before actually creating up the tls certificate we will have to generate the ca certificate so i have mentioned the command here it's an open sl command that is going to generate the certificate so i'll execute this command here and here you will be able to see that we got the ca dot cert and ca dot key this is the certificate and the, this is the ca key now once we have the ca certificate we can issue the certificates for our webhook and notice here that i am setting the service name as resource hyphen webhook this is the same service name that i'll be referring in the deployment as well so uh, make sure that you give the right service name here and then i'm just going to generate the tls certificate for my webhook so i'll just execute this command and now it should have the certificate for my uh, webhook as well so here you can see that i got the tls.crt and tls.key uh, that is available here now let me clear up the terminal and now we have to just create the tls secret and this is where we will just going to store these tls.cert and tls.key 
So let's execute this command, which is going to generate the TLS certificate. And our TLS is generated or our TLS secret is generated. Here we can see that, that we have the TLS certificate present in this particular secret with name TLS. And now we can simply go ahead and, you know, deploy our webhook and let's see our, you know, webhook manifest file. So if we go to manifest, uh, we have a webhook deploy and here you can see that I'm just calling this webhook with name resource hyphen webhook. And then I'm giving the name as uh, 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 name as container name as webhook. And then this is the image name. So I have already pushed the image to this particular uh, location. And uh, if you see here as well that I'm just mounting up the TLS certificate uh, here and this I'm just using them in this particular location. Then I also have a service and this service is also binding to port 8080. And now let's go ahead and you know, create this particular deployment. So our webhook is created. Uh, let's do kubectl get pod. And uh, our webhook resource is getting created. And uh, let's see the service as well. So service is created and uh, we'll just wait for the pod to get created. So pod is also running and uh, let's see the logs. Uh, the pod name is resource this thing and uh, here we can see that it is running successfully and uh, it is exposing these two endpoints which is health and then a uh, mutate okay so now uh, once we have the webhook uh, server or the webhook controller available now it's time to create the webhook resource or or the configuration for the webhook that is actually going to you know trigger whenever a pod is going, going to get created so i have a template here and before actually creating up the template uh, let's you know uh, let's see the template here so if you see this is the you know webhook uh, template that i have created and uh, this is how you define the you know mutating webhook uh, especially so if we go here, we can see that the name is given as resource webhook. Then this is the name of the portal webhook uh, that I'm giving and you can give any name here. Then here admission review uh, re version is given as V1. Earlier it, it was supposed to be V1 beta 1. But now since the this particular API has been, you know, stabilized and it's graduated, it's now moved to V1. Then uh, we are setting up the object selector as well. And here I'm setting uh, this particular uh, matching for this particular field which means that anytime if my pod is having this particular resource or this particular label uh, this is going to uh, that particular pod will get you know uh, processed by this particular webhook so if my pod is not having this particular label then it will be skipped by this particular webhook and uh, it will not you know go through this particular webhook but if there is a pod with this particular label then it will has to go through this particular webhook I'm giving the client configuration and I'm giving the service name. So, so my service name was webhook, resource webhook. Then it was present in default namespace and the path for which, uh, which is available in our cluster, in our webhook is slash muted and it's running on port 8080. Then here we have to give the CS certificate and uh, I, for that I've created a, you know, snippet that is going to populate this. And then here we are defining for what all resources we want to, you know, uh, get this web particular web out triggered so if you see the operation type is create so whenever a new pod is going to get created in our case we want this webhook to get triggered and here are the resources that for which this particular webhook will get created so for every pods uh with having you know uh, version as v1 and if the operation type is create this particular web will webhook will get invoked so now let's you know populate uh, create this particular webhook and uh, we have to also populate the csr there so this particular command is going to do that and uh, here you will be you will see that we have a webhook.yaml file and this is the CS certificate that is available and now this thing is also created so if I do kubectl get uh, mutating mutating webhook we can see that we have a mutating webhook and if I just describe this and the webhook name is resource webhook and here we can see that it is uh, it is simply uh, you know configured for all those parameters that we have defined okay so now our webhook is you know running successfully and we, webhook control is running successfully and we have defined the you know configuration for the muting webhook as well now let's try to create a pod and uh, the pod that we'll be going to create will have this particular label and we'll see you know this particular request uh, and limits are getting applied that we have specified in this particular uh, webhook so these these should get applied so let's do k run and uh, 
let's call it as nginx hyphen hyphen image is also nginx and then we can give the label as well and we'll be just giving this label and uh, why we want to get this uh, pass this label because uh, this webhook will get only invoked whenever the pod is having this this label so we just want to see whether the webhook is working properly or not so that's why i'm just setting this label and the value is set as true so pod is uh, pod got created and if we just see the logs again here we can see that it uh, you know it uh, the request was sent to our webhook here somewhere we printed out all the you know all the payload that was received so this is what we got and if we see or if and if we describe this portal pod so pod name is nginx so here we can see that this portal pod got created with these particular resource and limit values uh, or request limit values that we have specified in our uh, webhook server so here you can see that in the webhook server we specified these values and these values are coming here itself now let's try to delete this pod as well so k delete pod nginx and now let's create another pod without uh, without uh, this particular label that we specified so if we if i just simply remove this particular label ideally uh, this particular request should not get triggered to our uh, webhook server and these re request and limit uh, should not get applied to the particular pod so once i do that if i describe this particular pod we can see that there is no request and limit specified in this particular pod but if i create another pod let's try to create another pod uh, i'll create with some different name maybe nginx1 and uh, this should have this particular labels not labels the the limits and the request so here we can see that this has limits and request uh, available into the pod definition so this is how we can build uh, our custom webhooks and again there are variety of uh, use cases for the webhook and this one the the example that we saw this is for the mutating webhook similar way you can define the validating webhook as well where it will be just simply either accepting up the that request or rejecting up the request but it will never modify your uh, object request so now let's talk about you know where exactly or what can be the use cases for these webhooks so first use case can be around the security where you want to you know enforce specific security policies and prevent you know malicious or unauthorized request from entering your cluster the other use case can be on the compliance side where admission webhook can help you to enforce compliances with the industry standard or to the internal policies by rejecting the request or uh, that are violating these rules the third use case can be around the data validation where you want your admission webhook to validate the data in the kubernetes resources before you actually accept them and ensure that only valid and consistent data is stored into the cluster uh, the fourth use case can be around the resource management and this is the same use case that we saw where admission webhook can help you in you know setting up the resource limits uh, onto the resources that we are creating so if I have to summarize this video, so Kubernetes admission webhooks are a great way to, you know, enforce security into a Kubernetes cluster, do some sort of validation, resource management, like all these things can be done with the help of these particular webhooks. And uh, you can always ensure that, you know, the requests that are coming to your cluster, they are authenticated and, you know, uh, meeting up the policies of your organization. So this was it for this video. Hope you like this video. And if you did like this video, then please like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one.